Hello and welcome to another Betfred Sports video right here in the Quest Media Network studio. Peter, lots to look forward to this weekend. It's the FA Cup third round. Anything can happen. Loads of banana skins. But firstly, let's take a look at City's clash at Swindon tonight. What are the odds looking like for this one? Well, we've got um, uh, Swindon 14-1 to 1 to pull off uh, an unlikely victory. City, um, Betfred have a 1-7, to seven, so they're odds-on favourites to win that game, as you can imagine. Mm. We've got Raheem Sterling, 9-5 uh, to five to score first. Jesu, 4-1. to one. Is the sort of game where he'll bully those defenders yeah, of the lower so, division. Yeah. He's 4-1 to one to score first with Betfred. Uh, Foden, 9-2. Uh, to two. Um, and then Cole Palmer. Now, he's the guy from Withenshaw who's on mm. the fringe of the first team. Yeah. I think he'll start. Um, and I'll come to that later about the importance of them actually getting these games on because if they don't get them on then they'll end up with a situation where there's a, uh, a congestion in yeah. the fixture list backlog, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. In, in an amazing backlog mm. in about another month so they've got to play the games and I think it's fantastic that the FA have actually deemed that if they've got enough players like 13 outfield players and a goalkeeper just get on with it. Yeah. And City, with that fantastic academy, I can't speak more highly of it. I yeah. mean, it's a complete, beautiful, fantastically organised setup. Mm. They've got to play them because oh, yeah. they, 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 if they don't play, then no one else will, frankly. Yeah. They've got enough good players in that squad. The squad seems bigger than everybody else's to start with, of experienced international players. They've hardly lost any players oh. um, to the African Nations Cup. Um, and and they've got the, the uh, a title winning academy set up, so I think they will play uh, Swindon. I just hope they do, and they haven't got any more COVID mm, reports yeah. later on today. Yeah. Um, and that they'll play that. Um, the most common result, and um, so our Betfred customers do think this will be the game will go on, and City will win three 0 It's thirteen to two, and four 0 victory for City. It's nine to one. Well, lots of options are available to Pep Guardiola. So looking at that game, Peter, like we said then, City are clear favourites to win it. But Swindon, League Two, these are the kind of games where the Minnows could really come up and uh, stage something brilliant. Yeah, it is a dilemma for Guardiola, although he won't be there, but his staff will, and he'll be on the phone, no doubt. They will be uh, conscious uh, that they could be a banana skin and put their positions in jeopardy not in this case but mm. in, in other managers cases whereby they, they they wonder whether to put in the first team regulars if you like and they may pick up an injury but they win or play more of the uh, squad players and the youth players I quite like the idea of seeing these youth players. I yeah. really do. Yeah. I mean, sprinkled in, you can see the stars of the future. Yeah. And that Cole Palmer uh, from Withenshaw, he's an excellent prospect. He's a great player. Mm. Uh, any other league or team in the world, he'd probably be a starter. Yeah. He's that good. Um, and I, I think he'll, he'll lead the line tonight. Yeah, well, it's a great stage to showcase the skills. But... Is the FA Cup a priority for City? We always talk on these Betfred Sports Talk videos about the importance of uh, the Champions League for Manchester City. That's what the owners want, that's what Pep Guardiola wants, and that's what the fans want. But is the FA Cup a priority? Well, I'm not so sure whether the fans really like the Champions League. Um, I mean, they boo them <laughs> from time to time, don't they? And that continues. Um, I think the old fans, uh, the older fans, certainly want the Premier League as the number one priority. And then it is the FA Cup, you know, that day out in London. And then it's the League Cup, and maybe the Champions League is sort of in there mm. um, because that is what the owners certainly want. They want to be on the European uh, stroke world stage. Mm. Um, and it is, frankly, about time that City did win the Champions League. Do you think the competition has been devalued over recent years by the higher ranked sides who do field, uh, you know, basically an academy team? Like we were talking about earlier on, City will probably do that tonight. Do you think it has been devalued, though, by doing that? Well, it, it's got to have been. Um, it's sad to report, but that is the case. Mm. Um, the emphasis is much more on the rewards of the Premier League and the chances of getting into Europe. And the foreign owners certainly see that as the uh, be-all and end-all because of the revenue stream from the Champions League uh, to get uh, to, if they want to qualify for that, yeah. um, and then it's not just the Champions League; it's the Europa League, and then they have another one, yeah. don't they? So it goes on and on. So yeah. they get the rewards, but the fans they don't particularly like travelling all over Europe and the cost of it and everything. Yeah. They'd much prefer to go to places like Swindon, see what the atmosphere is like, 
um, in the lower league and have a great time. <laughs> and, yep. and it's not a million miles away, is yeah, it? Definitely. Well, the county ground certainly a lot different to the Etihad Stadium. So it is Swindon Town taking on Manchester City on Friday night. That is tonight. And looking ahead to Monday night's fixture at Old Trafford, we've got Manchester United hosting Aston Villa. Peter, the odds for this one, please. Well, Manchester United, it's a case of what Manchester United will turn up. <laughs> I mean, I could not believe that performance against Wolves. Talk about uh, individuals uh, just doing their own thing. Wolves just absolutely, they, they could have won 5-0. Yeah. I, I was at the game and I just couldn't believe how poor United were. Mm. Everyone was just doing their own little thing. And then when the manager took off Greenwood, I just couldn't believe it. He was clearly yeah. the most effective striker. Mm. It's as if he's frightened of uh, upsetting Ronaldo or yeah. Cavani. Um, and then they put Rashford on for a, like a cameo show at the end. Yeah. And then he gets booed because he does one misplaced pass. I kind of felt sorry for him. Yeah. Um, it was, and, and Sancho... He didn't do it enough either, but he's out of position, you see. He should be playing wide, up front, banging down the wing. He's, he's playing in kind of a wing-back yeah. role that doesn't suit him at all. Um, and then we've got this strange setup of like 2-2-2, two, 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 um, yeah. th three twos down the middle. Well, um, now, does that mean that we're going to be a bit exposed wide? Probably. It's and been, that's yeah. exactly what happened. It's bizarre. I mean, I think it goes to show it's not the managers, it's the players. The players just aren't up for it. They're not turning up. And I think it's just a symptom of modern day football. You know, the praise, they're idolised. They seem more concerned with their Instagram posts and the social media activity. What is going on with these players? Well, I think they want to um, start getting a reality check. As Fred Doan said in his, one of his columns, they want to see what the reality is like and get down a coal mine and see what it's yeah. like doing a, a proper day's work yeah. instead of uh, turning up at Carrington in the posh cars and um, not performing when they're paid to perform. Yeah. I mean, they only have to do it for 90 minutes, for God's sake, and just get a game, get a, a decent game in. Well, apparently they were c complaining that they had to train until five o'clock and they had to go home in the dark. That w There were the reports on that. I don't know if there's any truth behind it, but... <laughs> Well, I wouldn't necessarily believe that, but uh, it is interesting that there were there was grumblings in the camp yeah. about the training regime. But th the bottom line is they're not working for each other. They're not. They play like individuals. Uh, they think they've uh, made it when they sign for United and pull on that red shirt. But teams are catching them up, mm. and it's time that they, they took action and um, resolved it. Because yeah. otherwise, United won't qualify for Europe. No. They won't play. They won't be fourth in the league. Um, it's the FA Cup against Aston Villa. Um, and Steven Gerrard will be up for that big time. Yeah. Um, the odds with Betfred are four to six. So United are favourites. The odds on there uh, to win that game. Uh, Villa four to one. Um, Ronaldo five to two to score first. Um, and and he looked really, really, really angry. Um, I don't know whether they saw that picked up on TV, mm. but I saw him gesturing to his teammates to get forward. Yeah. They're, they're holding back, waiting for the opposition to, to get on them. Yeah. Um, and, and Bruno Fernandes isn't performing uh, to the standards expected. No. Um, he, I was going to say, they lack creativity in midfield. Well, he is a creative player, but he didn't do it. Uh, when he came on against Wolves, uh, Betfred had Ronaldo um, five to one, five to two to open the scoring. But Rashford is a decent bet for me. Um, I think he'll come back all guns blazing. He's five to one to score first. Um, United, the most popular bet, and this says it all: win one nil at Old Trafford. <laughs> That's six to one. Um, United two one, which is probably more realistic considering that defence, bolstered by the forgotten man Phil, Phil Jones. Jones. I mean, where is it? I forgot. It's that long since he's been in the team. Yeah. I've forgotten why everyone who slaughtered him and yeah. why he was dropped in the first place. It's almost two seasons yeah. since he played. Yeah, and he yeah. did okay against Wolves. They were saying he was man of the match. I think that was stretching it a bit, seeing yeah. he was at fault for that goal, not getting the header quite far enough yeah. out. But generally, he had a cracking game. And when he came off, he was in tears as well. I think the emotion got to him. He's taken a lot of abuse in person and online. So to come back from that, it takes a lot of heart, doesn't it? Yeah, it takes a lot of character. Yeah. Um, be interesting to see who moves out in this January window because it's reported that 12 players <laughs> are unhappy uh, with a lot at Old Trafford. I mean, how can you be unhappy at Old Trafford? Even if you're not playing. How can you, you be unhappy playing football professionally for 100 grand a week? <laughs> yeah, uh, but um, all they've got to do is train and get in that team. Yeah. So it's not that hard, is it? And be unhappy about that. Yeah. It's sad, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so United 2-1. 
Um, Betfred have that at seven to one. Brilliant stuff. Well, just to touch up on Aston Villa, uh, they've just signed Philip Coutinho from Barcelona on a loan deal until the end of the season. Now, when he moves to Barcelona, there was high expectations. Didn't really materialise. But do you think it's a bit of a coup for Aston Villa and Steven Gerrard? I'll tell you what, a bit of coup if United got him. He's the sort of player that United need. A little bit of um, creativity in the middle. And a a player who's intelligent enough to play the current manager's um, system. Ragnag's problem at the moment is the players are are not buying into his tactics because they know he's not going to be there next season. Yeah. So they need to say... He, he will be in next season, yeah. <laughs> kind of not make it up, but give that that implication, that imply that, mm. so that the the players think to themselves, uh, we better start pulling pulling up trees here, otherwise yeah. we won't be out even if we want to be next season. It's just a mess. Let's put let's put it right. It's a mess at Old Trafford. Yeah, it is. But there again, they're always in and about, aren't they? Yeah. Um, the amongst the favourites for the FA Cup, <laughs> um, the the. The equal sec equal favourites to make that fourth place, so you do wonder what it'd be like if they did get it right. Yeah, they could actually be challenging City and Liverpool at the top. Absolutely, never rule out Manchester United. Well, looking at some of the other fixtures this weekend, cup holders Leicester City host Watford, uh, and looking at non-league sides, Boreham Wood entertain Wimbledon, and Kidderminster Harriers host Reading of the Championship. Now, we'll move into some politics news now because apparently uh, Liz Truss is second favourite to succeed Boris Johnson, but Rishi Sunak still leading the pack. Yeah, that's the case. Um, We've opened a a market on how long Boris will actually survive. Um, And the money is indicating that he's likely to, um, or is it more likely, to if he survives the current kind of gamble over COVID, then he will... Um, survive until the end of, th- of this parliament which is 2024 so we have him at five to one to replace before in the, the current three months and then seven to one after that and then the odds just uh, go out after that um, they, they widen quite dramatically right. throughout 2023 um, and so at the start of if he survives until the end of, of the next parliament then he's six to five so also, that has opened up the idea of who would replace him yeah. during that period and beyond um, as Tory party leader. Mm. Um, and as you say, Sunak, the, the Chancellor, is a favourite, but coming up massively on the rails, and there's a lot of money on this, particularly in, great, in Greater London, uh, is Liz Truss, the Foreign Secretary. She's um, made it clear she's against the woke culture, so she'll pick up a lot of votes for that. Yeah. Um, and she's taken over um, uh, the, what some people think is the poison chalice of dealing with the Brexit fallout and all that's going on in yeah. Northern Ireland, which has taken over that from Lord Frost. She's moved from five to one with Betfred to be the next Tory leader in three months to three to one, second favourite. So that's a substantial movement that on the market. Um, and then we've got people like uh, Javid, the current health secretary, 16 to one. Um, and Jeremy Hunt, who has been critical of the government's policy over COVID, um, he's nine to one, which is the same price as the uh, Leveling Up Minister, also called the Housing Minister, Michael Gove, he's nine to one. But politics is a, a big business, particularly at the moment. The way to gauge it is, if it's been talked about all the time, like in the pub or people in the mingling, mm. then it's clearly of interest and yeah. therefore we take bets on it. Well, I think 2021 has been of interest to everyone when it comes to uh, political issues. But we won't move back into sport now. We'll take a look at rugby league because we're only a few weeks away from the start of the season. It kicks off on February the 10th. Peter, uh, tell us a bit about uh, what's going to be going on this season, who are the favourites and so forth. Well, what's interesting this year, um, and it's great that uh, how um, rugby league is evolving, is there's um, uh, Channel 4 are going to be broadcasting some of the matches right. at Saturday lunchtime. Right. Um, and it's great that they've been able to get the uh, the sport yeah. back onto terrestrial telly. Yeah. I know they do the Challenge Cup, but to have Super League, the Betfred Super League, on terrestrial TV is quite a coup. And as you can see right now, here are the latest odds ahead of the new season, which does kick off on February the 10th. And Peter, you've got all the latest on the new season. 
Yeah, well, it's looking like um, St Helens will do it again. Um, they're outright favourites, as you can see there. Um, they're favourites to win the grand final again. Um, see, Warrington um, have upped their game uh, with new coach and everything, so uh, they're second favourites. But what's interesting is the um, impact of um, Toulouse. Um, they're outsiders there, 150 mm. to 1 to win the grand final. But that's not ruling them out completely um, because they can invest heavily um, on new players. Yeah. Um, and so it is becoming quite a fascinating new season with uh, the two French teams yeah. in now, uh, Catalans and Toulouse, and also the um, involvement of Channel 4. Um, they're going to be doing um, the first Saturday of the new season. Um, but we open up with um, St Helens on the Thursday night. Well, it looks like the game's heading in the right direction, as you said then. Channel 4 will be showing it. I think it's been a long time coming. For as long as I can remember, it's always been on Sky, generally a Friday night thing. Yeah. Uh, it's a great sport to watch, and I think given these new things, it's, it's going to get wider. It's going to be global, isn't it? That's what they're trying to do. They've taken it yeah. to Canada before. Didn't really work. Yeah. It's been big in France now. Where else do you think it'll go? Well, I'd like to see it in Scotland and the um, south uh, east of England, Cornwall. There's, I know there's a team developing there. Um, these are areas in the UK that it could expand as well because it, the bottom line is it really is an M62 corridor yeah. sport uh, with the um, powerhouses of uh, Wigan, St Helens, Warrington, Leeds, uh, Huddersfield. Not necessarily in that order, of course, but on Hull. These are areas where it's stronger than ever before. Yeah. And it's interesting that it's bringing up more interest in France, um, as you say. But I'd like to see it in Scotland and in Cornwall and um, maybe another London team mm. bounces back. Yeah, good news all round. And if you do fancy a punt on the outright market for the Super League, Betfred stores are now open, but you can also bet online and buy their app.